what happens in the autistic brain. I don't know if this happens in the HST brain, but there's neural pruning that happens naturally. So the things that you don't need kind of get trimmed off. And in the autistic brain, there is no neural pruning. So our brains are like right? super, super computer highways. And that's why we take in so much information and notice details and sounds and noises and all of these things that people that don't have brains that are like ours don't have, which is why we get overwhelmed, why we need downtime, why we experience too much. And I can tell you that there are, and that's a pattern recognition also. I, I heard this great analogy. <laughs> It was really in terms of research that allistics, non-autistics that are studying autistics, it's like they've got, their brains are like, you know, the old little Apple computers with 64K of RAM. And the autistic brain with this lack of neural pruning, we've got these super connections. And so it's like this super, super, super computer that's huge. And it, it's like this. So this is going to sound ableist, and I, I don't know how else to communicate this, but this just made so much sense to me. Sense to me. So these holistic researchers that are not autistic with these little 64K computers are trying to conceptualize and study these supercomputers, but they don't have the capacity to really understand what they're studying. And so oftentimes the outcomes of research are flawed because of the lack of ability to really understand, but they don't know that they don't have the capacity. And I... As I say that, that sounds incredibly ableist, and it feels like there's some truth to it to me, because how many times have we been told that, you know, we're getting hung up on something or, you know, our perception and how we conceptualize things is just so different. Anyways, I don't want to make any enemies. <laughs> I'd love to see that. I really wish our research and our, you know, data lakes were more open source, um, because it would be it would be amazing to be able to cross-reference some of that stuff with HSP. I mean, I know you know this. There's probably just so much overlap, you know, and yeah. what are we, um, yeah, what, what, we're, what the paradigms are that we're using and the sets of assumptions to uh, be able to communicate about this stuff and understand it more deeply. I wish the researchers for ADHD and HSP and autism. And then I think we have to look at anxiety, depression, bipolar, borderline personality disorder, OCD, all got together because there's so much comorbidity. But oftentimes people are misdiagnosed with OCD if they're autistic because of that need for order and structure. And it's not OCD. It's common for people to be misdiagnosed with anxiety, depression, borderline personality disorder, bipolar disorder because of the overwhelm and having meltdowns. I'm not saying that those diagnoses in themselves don't exist because I, I believe that they do. But when you have, again, when you have practitioners that don't have awareness of, of the different diagnoses, then they don't see what they don't see because they don't, it doesn't look the way that they think that it looks. Yeah. Well, and I always want to hold the labels a little bit lightly, right? Because they're just, um, you know, they're systems of humans, like you were saying, trying to understand, um, hopefully ourselves i mean sometimes other humans and it's not something that the researcher personally identifies with which i think can be um everything has pros and cons right so yeah. problematic sets poses different sets of challenges you know but to hold the, you know again hold the labels hold the labels lightly there is a lot of overlap i mean that's pretty well documented that the inner relator the inner rater reliability and that stuff and you know things come in to the dsm4 things get taken out i kind of always fall back like you know homosexuality was in the dsm as a disorder and we don't think of it that way I so i do think that a big salt shaker is warranted as we're looking you know at these things and through one lens and non-pathologizing lens i've always found the hsp obviously uh, autism has a lot of stigma associated with it because it was looked at through a pathologizing lens and yes we're human so there's going to be lots of overlays with trauma and with you know anxiety and depression and even that you know the utility of pathologizing that it has some utility and then it has limits to that utility yeah. as well so at the end of the day you know being um compassionate and generous and telling the the truest but also you know most generous and beautiful stories about ourselves and others yeah. is really important